Good morning, everybody. John McCutcheon with EBR Systems. And as Ryan mentioned, we've developed the world's smallest leadless pacemaker. I'd like to explain to you why that's important and uh, what the clinical need is. We're in this space called cardiac rhythm management, pacemakers, commonly known as pacemakers. The most sophisticated part of that market is the cardiac resynchronization therapy space, CRT. And that's about a third of the uh, CRM market. It's about a $3 billion current market uh, dominated by Medtronic, Abbott, and Boston Scientific. Cardiac resynchronization therapy requires biventricular pacing where they have to take a lead into the right ventricle and the left ventricle and simultaneously or synchronously pace both sides of the heart. And this is to treat patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. One thing I'd like to point out, if you look at the image on the right, the leads going into the right ventricle are inside the heart, but on the left side, it's epicardial air. It's placed on the outside of the heart. And the reason that's done is because there's clot uh, formation or throm thrombus formation on those leads. And if that was in the left ventricle, those would migrate to the brain and obviously be a risk for stroke. So over the years, the, uh, the, the, the technology has evolved to be placed through the coronary sinus and uh, epicardially, and that creates a number of issues for these leads. Uh, sometimes you can't place the lead, so there's a number of acute failures where you'd like to put the lead there. There's also chronic failures where they migrate or fracture. Uh, these leads can uh, lead to infection, and the, the lead itself can be a, a pathway for the pathogens to go from the battery pocket down to the myocardium, so there's great risk there. And sometimes there's a suboptimal response to the CRT because that coronary vein on the outside of the heart, the epicardial vein, uh, has one pathway, and the disruption could be anywhere inside the myocardium. So they have limited degrees of freedom on where they can put that conventional lead. So it's through a leadless technology that goes inside the left ventricle that we can address all those needs. Now, on the right side of the heart, there are a number of leadless pacemakers that are either on the market or are coming on the market. The, the one that's out front right now is the Medtronic Micra and they've had wild success. So the bradycardia pacemaking market has been really stagnant and mature for the greater part of the last decade. And with the introduction of the Micra in the, in the last four years, it's really reinvigorated that market. And the Micra is about uh, 20 times the size of our device. So it can only go in the right ventricle. It's too big to be put in the left ventricle. But in spite of its limitations, it's commanding greater than three times the selling price of a conventional lead-based pacemaking system. They're growing at an incredible rate, and Medtronic announced that just last year they were at a $350 million annual run rate in the fourth quarter. They also project this will be a $2 million, $2 billion, excuse me, $2 billion product line for them within the next decade. And then Abbott has their, uh, their uh, similar product in development as does Boston Scientific. This shows you the relative size difference of these devices to the EBR Wise implant. And as I mentioned, the, their devices are just too large. They're thrombogenic. Uh, they don't endothelialize. They're also too long to be put in the left ventricle. They have to be placed at the apex of the right ventricle because if they go higher or more basally, they start interfering with the tricuspid on the right or the mitral valve on the left. And so they're not appropriate for most pacing scenarios where you need to be higher up on the, on the wall. And again, our size is a 20th of those devices. It's, um, uh, it's got a polyester Dacron covering, so it completely endothelializes within about 30 to 45 days. What makes it work and what's the, the, you know, the leap through or the breakthrough technology here is that our device is passively or remotely energized. We don't have a battery inside our device. So those other leadless pacemakers all are self-contained. They have a battery that's implanted within the heart. We have a series of piezoelectrics in our implant that receive ultrasound energy and convert that ultrasound energy to electrical stimulation to, to, to uh, activate the left ventricle. And we have a sensor in our transmitter that detects the pacing pulse from the, from the right-sided lead. So we take a conventional pacemaker that's pacing the right, and we pick up that signal, and within milliseconds, we synchronously pace the left heart 
without any, um, without, again, without any battery or any um, other electronics inside. It's, it's just a passive receiver. It's about two, uh, nine millimeters long, two and a half millimeters in diameter, and uh, very compact. This shows, this is a still shot of a, fl a fluoroscopic image showing um, our device, the EBRYZ implant, keying off of a Medtronic uh, Micra in the RV. And so the, some of the points I made earlier, you can see how the Medtronic Micra is pointed down to the base, the, the apex of the right ventricle. Again, it's too big to go up any higher. And you can see the EBRYZ implant is on the, high on the basal wall, lateral basal wall of the left ventricle. And so we can put that anywhere inside the left ventricle depending on the needs of the patient. You can see our transmitter in the foreground, and that's large, but that's superficial. That's put in uh, subcutaneously in the intercostal space. And that both detects the, the micropulse and then also signals the, uh, the WISE system to, to activate. Our total available market at, at launch is uh, our, our um, pivotal trial is based on patients that have acute or failed, uh, chronic or acute failed uh, CS leads for conventional CRT or those that are at risk, uh, high risk upgrades. So patients that have a conventional pacemaker that need to be upgraded to CRT, some of them have had multiple infections or they have multiple leads in place and they wouldn't be as um, amenable to or, or able to be upgraded. And so that's a market opportunity for us. That conventional system uh, market is about a $2.4 billion market in 2023 when we launch. The Medtronic Micro Market, which is a new opportunity for us, leadless CRT, where there's a leadless pacemaker on the right side, and then we upgrade that with our system, that's another $400 million opportunity just in the first year of launch. That'll become billions over the next, the next decade as the, the micro market grows, as Boston and, and Abbott get their devices out there. So you would think that these leadless technologies might be competitive, but actually they're very complementary and they're building a new market opportunity for us. We were able to renegotiate our pivotal trial with the FDA. We had been doing a, enrollment in a uh, multi-center randomized trial in uh, Jan January, February, March last year. We ceased enrollment with COVID, renegotiated the study design. The FDA was great to work with. And now we're completing that study with a single arm phase that will wrap up at the end of this year. We're currently raising a crossover round, uh, eyeing an IPO with our uh, PMA submission. We're looking for $50 million from uh, new institutional investors. And uh, that concludes my discussion. Thanks so much. Uh, CRM is gonna be changed dramatically with leadless technology and EBR will be leading that charge. Thank you.